Dear learners, welcome to Krishna Kato Hondikui State Open University. Today we are going to discuss on an important topic of the mass communication discipline. All the learners should know on this issue, that is, how to be a good communicator. We are very happy to have with us today two eminent professors of the mass communication discipline of the country, Professor Ram Mohan Pathak and Professor Subhas Julia. Professor Ram Mohan Pathak is the director of Modern Mohan Malabo Institute of Journalism, Mahatma Gandhi Kasi Vidyapit, Baranasi, and Professor Subhas Julia is a professor of School of Journalism and New Media Studies, Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi. I heartily welcome Professor Pathak sir and Professor Dhulia sir to this program of Krishna Kanta Hondiko State Open University. Before discussing on the main issue of this discussion program, we now look on the concept of communication. As you know, communication has always been one of the foundations of the development of human civilization. Any change or any development in the human world is closely associated with communication. In the wake of massive advances in the various areas of science and technology in recent times, communication has taken center stage in the contemporary political, economic, social and cultural life. Communication has become one of the controlling mechanisms in almost every areas of human life. We can say that it has become the fourth basic human need of the people, next only to the food, shelter and clothes. This is why it has become the necessary to understand the communication concepts and relate them to the contemporary human life. So, dear learners, at the very outset of this discussion program, we want to make your concept clear on what communication is. I would like to request Professor Dhulia sir to say something on the concept of communication. Well, you see, communication uh, is a foundation of human civilization because in the civilization begins with the communication. Now, communication is in every sphere, in every uh, right from the family organization to the top of it, we communicate. All the time, we are communicating. Yes. Uh, but uh, for the programs of the journalism that that all of you are opting learners, I think uh, this is very very vast and huge area when we talk about communication. So uh, I would relate it to the journalism because uh, news media is uh, one of the very very significant component of communication. Uh, news media is is uh, in a way news media is only small component of the overall media industry. It's hardly seven or eight percent of the yes. share of the media industry. But because news media is dealing with the political, the major chunk of political communication takes place through news media. That's why it is very critical, very crucial. Because it can influence the public opinion, it can influence the government <coughs> policies and programs. So news, news media in a way is mediating between general public and the government. So yes. it's a dual kind of communication. Yes. Communicating with the, the state organs and communicating with the common people. Now, that's, I think, the fundamentals that when we talk about communication, that, that in, 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 as a basic concept, we know it very well, that, that communication means there is a sender, there is a coding, there is a message, then there is a receiver. And in between, there may be various kind of obstructions. In terms of the mechanical noise, your television set is not working, it's faulty, there is no electricity. But second component, the socio-cultural barriers at times. For example, the kind of language that I am using. I have an accent. I am using certain words. I may not be communicating with you. So that's where it's come the question of the social culture and wise. For example, the kind of English that is spoken in this part of the country. I think you can communicate very easily. But maybe my accent is not communicating the way you communicate among yourselves. Professor Dhulia sir has pointed out on the importance of communication in the socio-cultural context. Now, I would like to request Professor Pathak sir to explain your views on the concept of communication. I think uh, communication is like breathing in our life. Communication starts from the first breathing of the person. When a child is born, communication starts. And when a person is dead, I don't think that the communication comes to an end because it is an unending cyclical process going throughout the life and after life what is there 
it is still to be studied it is a subject of study we in indian mythology in indian uh, concept we believe that even the child in the womb of a mother he has the capacity to catch the signals catch the communication process as it is imbibed as it is described in mahabharat yes mahabharat the last of mahabharat the end of mahabharat could have been else if the mother of abhimanyu was not slept if she was awake then communication would have completed and he would have gone out of those uh, that seventh gate which he could not break and he died and mahabharat was the story of mahabharat took a turn on that point so communication is the basic need of our life who says we say bread butter employment and housing that is shelter those are the basic needs but how do one how do we know how one knows that what is roti how roti is being prepared how bread is being prepared how the shelter we can make i think the fruit which adam and eve ate there is a story that adam and eve do both of them were in a jungle and they suddenly got a fruit it came down and they ate and they cried we are naked the sense of civilization sense of wearing something that came out of that fruit we in the field of communication must think over it that i, I so far as i think it it was not the uh, simple fruit simple apple it was the information it was the fruit of information which came to them which they could understand god knows the source but authenticity authenticity of source we cannot prove but i think that it was the information input of information input input of coming through communication from somewhere and they could understand that there is a need of kapda that is the clothing clothing of a man is there so roti kapda makan means bread uh, clothing and shelter these are the basic needs but moreover uh, the most significant and most important need is that of communication better communication better understanding and better understanding makes a better civilized society Professor Patak sir said that when a child born, the communication process starts, but when a person dead, the communication process does not end, because it is a cyclic process. So, dear learners, we have discussed on the concept of communication. Now we are going to discuss on the focus area of this discussion program, that is, how to be a good communicator. A good communication effort helps us immensely in influencing. and winning over people solving problems building bridges among nations and societies so let us discuss on the qualities of a good communicator to begin your journey in the field of mass communication so i would like to uh, ask uh, professor dhulia sir first about uh, the qualities to be a good communicator sir well we have briefly discussed that that uh, how to be a kind of a effective communication because how to make your message effective yes sir. so that means always you have your target audience in your mind if you are a journalist or you are any kind of a communicator you may you may be addressing mass audiences but you are dealing with a single person because it is one single individual who is receiving your message so first challenge is that when we are drafting a message for a very very huge audiences Uh, thousands of the people maybe lakhs of the people then you are drafting a message for each individual because they are not receiving it in collectively they are receiving it individually so i think the first quality of a communicator is that how you analyze your audience how you have a very heterogeneous very huge audiences how you analyze work out a common message which will be effective effective to for the entire audience which is very very huge if you are working for a television news channels or a newspaper you are fully aware that millions of the people are watching your message now how to draft that message 
that is that is i think the biggest challenge yes before a communicator and that's where you need great amount of conceptual skills you need great amount of the knowledge you need great amount of of the language skills you need great amount of understanding of the content yes sir if you are writing on some political subjects yes, then how you make that that their subjects easily which which can easily be understood as a journalist i think you are a journalist you are a communicator because you have ability to transform a very complex kind of information into what we call the news format yes sir that a common man can easily understand now that's why you are a journalist that's why you are a communicator you are not a specialist because a specialist will present very very complex information complex manner now he is transferring the knowledge to a very very small audiences you are journalist because in a subject like very delicate and complex subject like economics you are transforming that very complex and complicated information into a news format where you need great amount of skills and that news is being consumed by very common people and they can understand it that's where the biggest challenge of a communicator is journalist that 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 that's, that's where you have to develop proper skills i have my firm belief belief as professor dholia has rightly said that one must have command over two things there are two major major areas where we are to be absorbed as a, when we come out of the education area as a student as a professional as a professional one must have command over pen as professor dholia has very rightly said that he must know how to write what could be the framework what could be the uh, requirement of the audience yes so pen master of the pen pen is mightier than sword it's very old saying but uh, these days pen might not be in the picture because uh, most of the works are being done by computers only so pen and paper is newsroom concept has although come but pen means the presentation the command over language command over written language and another area is where anchors most of the students come and ask how can i become a successful anchor so being a successful anchor one must have command over language spoken language spoken words command over spoken words and weaving into the thread of uh, that is called uh, thinking which are the opinion so that is very well targeted within the framework of an incident or accident or some uh, some thing being organized there so one has to weave it into the uh, several things and to present is in a, a effective way the second thing is we are in the age of news stories from news to news stories this journey of this our news the basic news news is sacred that that's an old saying but news now it is being put it is being shown it is being presented over radio and uh, with so many effects visual effects visuals and sound effects and uh, visuals in print media also but when we present it we must have uh, keep it in mind what is required and uh, the old thing is gone that what is not to be shown what is not to be Uh, known made known to the public to the audience we are in the age when each and everything most of the things within the framework of our ethics we have to show we have to show more and more because we are in the age of competition so the news story must tell each and everything 5w1h has been the concept who what where when why and how now one more component has been added to whom whom to whom from both the sides whom means these 5w1h and plus whom and to whom we are addressing This their need we yes. must assess the need one must have the skill of assessing the need of the audience what the audience needs suppose one tv channel shows one thing from another angle another tv sh- channel shows the same thing with another angle so we have to uh, visualize we have to estimate 
we have to assess the needs of the audience, target audience. So the target audience, one thing as Professor Dhulia has already said, the cognition level, we must understand the cognition level. Uh, being a successful communicator, uh, we must know what our audience can understand, what not. If we say something from the Western uh, culture and people are not aware, the bullfight might be that in the uh, village areas they don't know, but the Spain people know what is bullfight. But our people may not know. So we have to be very much cautious while using the sentences, while making the language. Another thing, one very important thing that we must keep the general public's language in our mind. Uh, there cannot be an umbrella coverage language. A language covering the whole of the country like India cannot be possible. But nearest possible is the concept. We must use the nearest possible concept, nearest possible words which can, could be understood by so many people. Now we are very happy that not only Hindi but English is accepting the regional language words. Yes. When uh, there was a headline in the Times of India, Chakde, Chakditta. What does it mean? A word from Punjabi has come to the English uh, most uh, respected newspapers uh, banner headline. So the, our words are also going there. That is because of the uh, understanding of the communicator. Whosoever is writing there, whosoever is speaking there, one must understand that these words are becoming very much common, being used in so many languages in Hindi, English, Assamese and other things. Thank you, sir. Dear learners, by this time we have discussed so many important issues, so many important topics of mass communication. Now we are going to discuss on an important, very important point in this program that is skill versus technology. Journalists should not be controlled by the technology. That is a very important topic of discussion. So I would like to request Professor Dhulia sir and Professor Pathok sir to say something on the issue of skill versus technology. There is a numerous expansion of, of, of media. Now, there is market competition as you have pointed out. There are large number of new channels, newspapers. And most importantly, what Professor Atak said is that the different kind of packages that are emerging, yes, different kind of effects that are being used. That technology is offering numerous options and then a journalist is packaging these these in the different form, depending on the nature of the subject. Yes. Now that's where I think technology on the one hand is becoming a bit important. And here I think a great amount of care has to be taken that technology is being used by journalists. Yes. And a journalist is not being controlled by the technology. Because in some of the new channels I have observed that uh, it's not very conceptual work but it has become very very technical work. That means the entire technology you need only speed and, and that's it. That's why at times language is becoming casualty also. And another important point is that the language of your communication. Yes. There is a great amount of dynamism that is emerging in English language, in Hindi, in Assamese, in different languages. It's very healthy tradition that we are picking up words from here and there and that developing a very, very communicable, that means uh, language. But yes. again, I think certain amount of precautions uh, needs to be taken here. Well, for example, there is a spirit and there is a nature of a language. So some words may fit in very, very effectively. Yes. For example, seminar is perfectly okay. It's far better than saying ghosty or some ghosty. So it can be adopted. Yes. But then again, we have to take into consideration whether that word is really fitting in into that very nature. Whether it's fitting into that. Yes. At times, otherwise, it's a obstruction in the communication because every language has a flow. Yes. When you write, there is a flow. So, don't use the word which is obstructing that flow in the yes. language because yes. again, that will be obstruction in the in the communication. But at the same time, this very healthy trend that we pick up words. We have picked up station. We have picked up schools. We have picked up meetings, seminars, a number of other words that yes. we have picked up. So that is. It works both way, I think. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I want to uh, request uh, Professor Pathok, sir, to say something about uh, the skill and technology. 
skills, as Professor Dhulia has already mentioned here, skills, the basic of this editorial or journalistic skill is that language. Command over language, it is that we are lacking. The new generation of the journalists, it is lacking. Yes. One thing, the other thing is, in this competition, in this age of competition, of knowing technology more, uh, more than what we should know, more and more, we are forgetting our basics of Indian journalism. That is called the mission. What is this mission? Yes. Mission is to be true, to be truthful, cause, uh, fight for the cause. One yes. concept was there, check, recheck and cross-check. We are forgetting that. Whatever news pours in, in our news portal, in, in our computer, in our mobile or where, wheresoever, we are in a haste. Deadline is a very dangerous thing. One must be, it is said that no journalist uh, sleeps. Journalists never sleep. Yes. So it is all right. But this uh, dagger of uh, deadline may, sometimes makes us apologize Afterwards, we see that there was nothing and we have no option then to apologize with the audience that it was a wrong thing. So, one must be in haste. Journalism is really a literature in haste, but it is literature. Literature means Sahitya. Sahitya means the, in the interest of the society. So, so far as technology, time constraint and other things are there, we must keep it in mind that we have still to follow the rules of the earlier uh, editors, great editors, who were the mentors of our large, uh, uh, very respected democracy all over the world, that check, recheck and cross-check. Yes. We must do it. Otherwise, we will put our editor in trouble, ourselves in trouble, the reporter will be himself in trouble, and his organization, his or her organization will also be in trouble. Yes. So, this should be done. Technology, we, uh, one is expected to know technology. There is no life without technology. But the basic things, the basic science, the pure science behind that, a little bit of that input must be known. How the camera works, what are the basic things there. Just one puts a camera on his or her shoulder and comes out and be, tries to become a very successful anchor. There are so many. Yes. But to study the uh, effectiveness of technology, to study why people say that the, uh, I am not propagator of Discovery Channel, I am not getting anything from Discovery Channel, but the photography, yes, the words, the language, the language component, why it style. is to presentation style, why it is supposed to be one of the best yes. in the, so they have to work it, one has to work it because as uh, our Prime Minister, the late Prime Minister said, Parishram ke alawa koi dusra rasta nahi hai. There is no way out than to hard work. So, being successful communicator means hard work. It is the success in the field of communication, in the field of journalism is supposed to be hard work and risk. As in Hindi we say, it is talwar ki dhar pe dhavano hai. Means, one has to run on the edges of the sword. Yes. So that is a very dangerous work, very risky work. It is not that we are known each and everywhere. So many people fold, handers, uh, fold, their, fold their hands before uh, us. They pay respect. The respected editors have been. This is the 125th year of Pulitzer. Yes. Why Pulitzer is being rem remembered? Yes, exactly. Although he was the propagator of yellow journalism, yellow journalism, even then his contribution in so many other fields was also there. So he worked, he dedicated his life. So communication or journalism or journalist has another name that is dedication. One who has no sense of dedication I think that he should, he or she should not come to this profession yes. to become a successful communicator. Professor Julia, sir. Well, uh, your original point was skills in technology. Yes, sir. That means who controls whom. Yes. Whether men control the technology or technology controls control. the men. Yeah. I think that has become very, very crucial, the kind of profession that we are practicing today. And <coughs> I think we have to be very clear that what kind of skills are required for what. And broadly we can say we need two 
kinds of skills. One is conceptual skills that we develop through the knowledge that we acquire. acquire. And knowledge, I think, that means that's what we are stressing upon is that is the foundation of whatever you do. Uh, knowledge means when you acquire more knowledge, you develop your, your language as well. Because after all, you express your, long, lang- your knowledge through, your, through the language, your knowledge. Now that's where, when we say who control whom, then if you are trained only in the sec- second category of these schools, which we can say technological schools. Uh, you know how to operate a computer. But you don't have knowledge, you don't have conceptual skills, that what kind of content that you are creating. Now, first is content, content means your news story. And second is how you deliver it. For delivery, technical skills are required. But to create, rural, yes, in both, yes, both, both ways. But to create content, conceptual skills are required, knowledge is required. So you have to combine these two things, conceptual skills and and operational skills or technological skills. If you are conceptually strong, then you will control the technology. If you are conceptually poor and technologically very strong, then technology controls you. Yes. So now, if you have operated a program in the field of journalism and mass communication, then what are the requirements in fact? We have been stressing upon the command over the language. Now again, elaborating further, I think, there are three major components to become a good journalist and to become a good communicator as a journalist. But you have first is that you have a content. Yes. Then you have to package that content and then you have to deliver it. Yes. Now what you need it, uh, I would say it's combination of knowledge, language and the, the craft. Now, when I say craft, then I am talking about these technological skills, these operational skills. When we say communication, then we are dealing with, with communication as science. When we say journalism, then we are dealing with the, with the, with the craft. Yes, sir. Journalism as a craft. Now, now, that is very, very important that, that how you combine knowledge, language and the craft. If it's only craft, then that's not enough. So if we take communication, that means when we say journalism and mass communication, and we place the professor of, of, of journalism in the overall concept world of the mass communication, then that's where we must have adequate knowledge that what really is the world of com- mass communication. And where we place the journalism. Mass communication means acquiring knowledge. Now, education and training. Most of the journalism program programs are combination of education and training. Now there is a stream who are very very critical of training. Yes. Sir. In fact, Professor Aspal, who is a renowned educationist, yes, yes, sir. once he told me that he is against training. He said he is against training oh. because his training means you are closing the minds. You are training a person that so that he can fit in the huge machine of of news industry. That you train a dog. Yes. So, so training has to be combined with the with the education. Education is knowledge, and training is to become fit for particular job. And it's extremely important that this knowledge, language, and craft has to be combined in a very very rational manner. Otherwise, things go either this extreme or that extreme. Training is not enough. Education is also very very important. Imparting knowledge important. Now, for example, if you are reporting press conference of the Prime Minister, he will be talking about all kind of issues from internal security to relations with the Pakistan nuclear deal and, and if it's one hour press conference then you can think of it that he will be touching upon every every aspects of our national life, our foreign policy. Now how you if you are TV journalist, then just after the press conference, you are before the camera. You are talking to your, your audiences. How you pick up that what is the most important? Immediately you have to tell that what Prime Minister said. In one hour, you are reporting in say 30 seconds your opening sentence. Now you evaluate that newsworthiness when you have knowledge of all those subjects. 
in print media at least you get a chance to yes. think over you you get so many hours to think about over it a tv journalist is strange journalism now that is where sequencing is that's where knowledge matters so a journalist is not a neutral carrier of information a journalist is not a postman who doesn't know contents of the letter a journalist must be aware of the content that he is delivering a journalist is a is a communicator that's why because he is gathering information he is adding meanings to it he is placing that information in a perspective and that he can do only because he is a knowledgeable person yes. and last part is how you deliver it that's where the technology come in yes sir uh, thank you sir and uh, um, professor dhulia sir um, mentioned that uh, content is very much important then packaging packaging is also very much important yes, because of course we have a content yes. then you package that yes, using sir. different technological options there are various formats of com- yes uh, nature packaging. of the medium yeah exactly and again you have delivery you have numerous options how to deliver it yes you yes. have internet you have newspapers you have yes, you have radio you have television you have the convergence convergence of the technology now so delivery options are numerous now but content is the most challenging now yes sir. because at times we discover that in new channels the content, content is very important yeah, people As are getting views amount of information but content is is nothing nothing uh, so far as uh, content is concerned there is one uh, question being raised by students all over wherever i go yes sir they say that traditionally there were three formats three things so far as the media content was concerned news views and advertising yes so there is amalgamation convergence at this level also yes convergence at the level of technology convergence at the level of skills convergence at the level of ownership yes. cross media ownership is what that is a kind of convergence, convergence. so now the news views and advertising both are being converged into students ask how can we be with the truth how can we file very interesting human interest stories those are uh, related with the panics the um, the grief of the common common man and common people because we don't have enough space when enough time for that we i say that you try to file every day one or two this kind of stories and keep it in your storage don't get it vanished whenever times comes people will be accepting those stories that will suffice that will be giving you consolation that you have done your job the requirement of the job of a journalist a missionary journalist but don't try to fight the proprietor or the owner of the media because because of this amalgamation of news views and advertising there is a furor there is a uh, illusion our uh, journalist or communicator comes sometimes in illusion what to do how to do but he must try to understand that he is the carrier of the news as professor dhulia has said that he must know what is there in the content he is not just a postman not knowing the letter he is delivering throwing the letter or getting it signed and handing over to the people who signs that but it is we must know what impact it should have on the society that precaution he or she must have to take but so far as the pressure is concerned now i think uh, earlier it was the pressure on the proprietors now it is on the uh, journalist journalist yes. general journalist general p- person working on that so there is one thing we were just discussing professor with, uh, with professor dhulia that uh, giving money or giving some kind of uh, uh, things to a journalist and getting it published or getting his broadcast it is a kind of bribe but when it is paid officially through check and one gets published disinformation what we call it disinformation during those days of uh, cold war there was a war of misinformation disinformation and the real information yes so one has to take out what is real what is right thing but during that last elections there was a paid news uh, concept of paid news emerged very uh, 
predominantly throughout the country there is a discussion there is a debate on this yes. but now i think the whole journalism has become paid yes. earlier it was not paid nothing in journalism was paid that was all missionary so these days we can't ex ex uh, expect from a journalist uh, from a uh, person coming to this uh, course that he will be doing it uh, for charity or on the missionary basis bhukhe vajan hoy gopala one cannot do without having his bread and butter yes. but having bread and butter and earning uh, ma making journalism uh, for earning uh, money uh, with not uh, not so prescribed manners in the society that is uh, the challenge so one must have to understand that he is the carrier of truth yes. carrier of news news is truth and not gyan as one thing i would like to say here that gyan is one thing yes. gyan one must weave into it uh, that uh, this is this uh, festival is being uh, uh, celebrated and the background the legendary uh, stories the story behind this uh, any festival or anything or anything occurring on this so that we have to weave into but we must differentiate between the news and the gyan yes sir. news is not a gyan media is not expected to provide gyan every time yes we must have to put the truth before the audience yes. whatever is uh, in whatever form it is for gyan another time space another space in the print media is required now lots of space and time is being provided for gyan also but a reporter a an anchor is not supposed to deliver gyan if he delivers gyan only then uh, he may not be a successful person yes uh, i think uh, professor julius sir wants to add something here. yes yes uh, well i think as uh, we have been discussing that means that the issue of the paid news uh, because we know that in in last in last i think 15 years the great amount of commercialization has occurred in the in the media sector uh, it's perfectly okay having a business model it's perfectly okay that a newspaper or news organization is sustaining itself uh, you cannot run your organization if it's running in the losses survival is survival is is the question is vital so a business model to that extent is perfectly okay but in last 15 years what really has occurred is that it is a kind of a breton to commercialization when you are tampering with the basic nature of the news story that be, what i would say is that when we say news then there are certain attributes attached with it of course yes now what really happening is tampering with this format that means at times fiction and facts are being mixed up in a very most irrational manner now i will just cite an example that if i tell a child a story of the ghost yes. then i i am making it clear that this is a fiction this is story yes but if you tell a child that i have seen a ghost outside the, my house then you are talking a fact yes and that is misleading for saying that here is the distinction that at times because of this commercialization even the fictional stories eh, purar janman some kind of yes, superstitious yes, and uh, there was one incident with the most clear example of this kind of commercialization that in madhya pradesh one one pandit ji he announced that he is going to die at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock yes, in that <laughs> evening yes yes eh, by his his janam patri he uh -huh. made that prediction yes sir. and shockingly two television channels yes sir. where telecasting live from that spot exactly sir. that that person was going to die yes fortunately he did not die yes, yes. sir <laughs> if he could have died at that particular point of moment i think we should have taken this country back to this paper yes. yes in terms of the rational thinking yes sir right and there is all chance because one point in a million there yes. is chance that he can die because he is focusing on his death yes so sir so if a person is focusing on his death he can well die because of heart attack also Yes. Now that's one example, grilling example that when fiction is being presented as a fact, yes. and that's I think very very dangerous trend. Yes. Professor Dolias, should I intervene one yes, yes. one instance? I am remembering uh, when one experiment Big Bang was going on. Yes. 
when the one of the dates was announced that on that same day the whole universe will uh, yes go into yeah. airs yeah one a frightened girl died on the same day hanging herself because in haryana i think because uh, she knew that when no, nobody will be there yes, yes. yes so how uh, what is the um, reality what is the purpose of my being live yes so i vanish yes exactly i can also remember the headline of a particular news channel for it pandit ji's case mm-hmm. which is aaj marunga me or like this <laughs> mm-hmm. was a headline uh, yeah, he had gone through his jaram patri yes. and mm-hmm. then he predicted that that's why he was trying to communicate that we everything just in that when you are going to die when you are going to born now that was one phase of the commercialization that means now when you say journalism then as a journalist, journalist we do and we have been presenting a news story in an interesting manner it was always important to present the news in the very very interesting manner throughout the profession that means it's very very important that we present the information in interesting manner so that our readers can read it our list, listeners will find it interesting and we generate an interest now in that process at times we have also been doing dramatization a certain amount of dramatization is also element when we make something interesting and then comes after dramatization come the issue of the sensationalism now these three phases we must be very clear that where we are drawing the line of demarcation now this is a territory to make a story interesting we can take this much element from dramatization now here we are entering into total dramatization that means we are playing with the core values of the profession and then comes the sensation sensationalism the yellow journalism that like quoting something totally out of context now one bloody example that that i would like to cite here is that once uh, priyanka gandhi was in amethi and during that period this abhishek bachchan's marriage was being debated and you all know that there is some conflict between amitabh bachchan family and gandhi family that means yes. between rajiv gandhi and amitabh bachchan one television correspondent he just inside car he pushed his camera and he asked her that are you going to attend uh, this uh, abhishek's marriage yes now there was no issue no agenda no context nothing nowhere from it ki aap uski shaadi mein jayengi and in hindi she answered that aap fazool ki baatein kar rahe hain she said you are talking nonsense not nonsense but meaningless things now in that tv channel the slug was Uh, abhishek ke saadi fizul priyanka gandhi <laughs> now that's 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 the blatant that means sensationalism yes uh, in fact uh, when we used to talk the journalism we used to cite hypothetical examples now we have numerous real example to say that this is sensationalism now today journalism is is indulging in the grabbing attention it has gone beyond sensationalism they been does in sensational at great amount now they want to grab the attention that a consumer or a listener is just a, a viewer is just surfing that the channels they want him just to stop there and watch them so they are showing something which is unusual which is extraordinary yes which is total nonsense not bothering about the core values of the journalism they want to grab the attention and then we start watching it i do it Yes. is something very unusual is being shown to be ahead yeah. and to be fastest yeah. is the and it's because it's interesting it's entertaining uh, so yes. grabbing attention and then when you grab the attention then you are trp that means how many people are watching this television goes up yes. now this is that age of commercialization that we have entered into and now these questions are being raised whether news media works for public good or news media is purely a business venture yes, and sir. that debate is going on and i think these issues are very very important today yes. that what is the role and place of news media in our society yes as an instrument of imparting knowledge yes. educating people informing them yes or whether this is a pure blatant naked commercial venture yes at times we do feel that it is becoming a very very that means commercial venture and the but new entrants must interest, keep it in yeah. mind yes. yes but then we have a significant section of the media Yeah, which is which is still as well as the serious journalism and we do think that some day now people are also an, becoming aware 
I will set an example that uh, in a train and one person told me that initially when there used to be say that parda fast hone ja raha hai so he said we used to stop that something is going to come he said now when we see gota parda fast we don't watch it we do because <laughs> nothing is coming out now gradually people will develop that kind of attitude right. so ultimately i think it's the consumer or whether it's citizens or listeners viewers that they will become mature and and news media will have to uh, take shape accordingly because entire news media cannot sell the same product you have in numerous news channels you may have one like in america there is a fox news channel which is very sensational but we have an abc nbc you have public broadcasting so the 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 media escape is 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 very with, with almost variety it's diverse it's, it's, so people will need different kind of products and in a real market situation there will be news organizations who will be offering different kind of products yes so uh thank you sir uh, uh, i will just uh, yes, one more sentence yeah now why i will conclude by saying that when you are entering into this profession please get rid of some of your myths but don't simply get governed by thinking that this is a world of money and glamour if you you really want to be a real journalist just get rid of these myths never think that you are becoming yeah. an anchor in television new channel 90% of the men power some of the very senior journalist they never appear on the screen it's solely 10% of the people and even less than that who are reporter and anchor who appear on the on the screen, screen. so first is uh, don't go by this glamour glamour means this kind of publicity that everybody will be watching us on tv screen get rid of that myth if you have that myth some of you can but this is not a great deal in journalism there are so many streams in the journalism which are very very significant and second is that don't think that there is huge amount of money in journalism journalism is is a kind of dedication as you said it's a commitment it's public service it's that it's is addressing your creativity your writing skills you enjoy the profession yes that's very very important and then in journalism as far as money is concerned there are some exceptions when people will go to the high bracket of the income in a very quick point of time but for 90% of the journalist the progression simple is that they start from say 15 to 20000 in national newspapers yes sir. in small towns it may be even 5000 3000 and normal progression is that after 5 6 years of their career they are drawing a salary of around 50 60000 which is not a very big money big money and that is true for the 90% of the journalist so please if you have those myths that this is the glamour and this is money then be rational in your approach dear learners today we have discussed on the various issues of mass communication particularly on how to be a good communicator on behalf of krishna kato handiko state open university and on my own behalf i am really thankful to professor subhas julia sir and professor ram mohan pathak sir for being with us today and for giving their valuable inputs uh, for our learners thank you so much sir Thank you.